Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Cheyenne Malone, exclusively on ASBN.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Cheyenne Malone. You're watching another edition of The Small Business Show, exclusively on ASBN.com and now streaming on Roku, Fire Stick, and Apple TV. Prepare to dive in the realm of business bravery and bold decisions. On today's show, we are joined by Ryan Berman, entrepreneur, keynote speaker, and author. Ryan's brand is all about courage and how being courageous can push you to the next level. Something we all are striving for, right? Ryan, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Well, welcome to the show. Love having you here. First, tell us about yourself and your journey as an entrepreneur. Yeah, so uh, my business today is called Courageous. I never thought I'd be in the, the courage business. I actually came out of the advertising world and had crazy mad men for mentors. And uh, when I actually look back at those 20 some years of learning from them, it, it, it was a series of courageous moves that had me move to New York City and, and learn from them and then move and start my own business out in Southern California. And the more I step back, a lot of this was during my book writing process, uh, interviewing brave leaders, realize that, wow, it's, it's amazing what I'm learning is actually what I was following to start my own business. Why is it so important for people to have, especially entrepreneurs, to have courage? So the statistics are pretty bonkers. You've got 52% of the Fortune 500 since 2000 that are now gone and turned over. And the good news, I guess, is that means that half the spots in the Fortune 500 are, are opening up. But you've got more businesses that are coming into the market than ever before. I think I just recently read that you had over 4 million business applications were submitted in the U.S. alone in 2020, which was a 75% increase in 2019. So you got a ton of competition that's happening in the marketplace. And if you think about it and you're not thinking about all that competition, often we get stuck in the media obese reality and your your message or your idea lands in with everything else in the sea of sameness and it doesn't have what it needs to really break through so the concept of courage like if you're stuck maybe you're scared maybe you're stale or you're playing it safe the concept of having courage and not just unlocking it for yourself but unlocking it across your team that is the competitive advantage if we know that 95 percent of businesses aren't going to be able to get out of their own way and you have a book, Return on Courage. What inspired you to write your book? And maybe give us a few highlights from it. Yeah, to be honest, I was, you know, I live in Southern California. We're based in San Diego. And I was merely trying to position my last creative agency and thousands of competition and looking to differentiate ourselves. And we had landed on this concept of courageous ideas are the only ones that matter. And, and I do believe in that. But the idea was to go on a listening lap of the country and sit down and interview what now I call the brave, the bullish, and the brainiac. And as I went through and met all of these amazing leaders, you could start to find common themes on how these companies were staying ahead of the pack. And it wasn't just these little companies, it was some of the biggest companies in the world who had put resources in the right places to remain more agile than the rest. So one, uh, it it's, can get pretty brutal out there. I, in the book, I call them the five truths of the business apocalypse. And if you are a business leader and you're listening to this show, these are some of the realities that you're dealing with. Number one, companies are perishing at an all time rate. It's pretty, pretty tough out there. Mm -hmm. Two, the thing that got you here isn't going to keep you here. So you got to start working on your what's next, which of course is very difficult because number three is that you need time, but you don't have time. Cheyenne, I don't know about you, but I think a lot of us feel time starved and we're just trying to get through the day job and now you're telling me i've got to put resources on onto my what's next the fourth truth that i cover in the book is that we're we're not inspiring our people and i think you're feeling that from our from our people are they truly staying because of conviction or are they staying for the paycheck and then the the fifth one is and this was the biggest surprise for me i talked to cambridge phds and clinical psychologists and the literal makeup of who we are as humans, we're literally wired to fear change. Cheyenne, I don't know the last time you said central nervous system in a normal conversation at the dinner table, but this is the thing that's calling all the shots and it's sort of right there, your nervous system. So it's designed to, to say, hey, don't touch that hot stove or maybe don't say that thing in this meeting. And so we have to come up with tools and frameworks to combat the realities of those five truths. And that's really what Return on Courage does is it gives you the actual steps that you can follow to unlock courage in yourself and in your teams. 
Can you share with us, Ryan, uh, an example of a business that's benefited from embracing courage? I love using commodity businesses okay. to discuss this because if a commodity can do it, then then anybody can do it. You know, there's the the few that come to mind right out of the gate, like Method Soap, right? Method Soap mm -hmm. thought it was pretty odd that you had to wear rubber gloves to clean your house. How clean are these ingredients really if you have to put rubber gloves on to clean your house? Did you try to read the, the nine syllable word that's on the back of the label? So they went to work on creating a, a cleaner and a better product and method the mantra of the company is the people against dirty are you for dirty or against dirty so here you go method soap has and this is eric ryan who is a serial entrepreneur and has found a way to just take commodities and and really look at them differently but he found a way to make soap cool like if he could find a way to make soap cool and separate from the pack <laughs> it is there for the taking for everybody that's one example. Another one that I cover in the book in the first chapter is the story of Domino's. Just, just again, this is cheese sauce and dough we're talking about here. It's not a company that's a Silicon Valley company. It's a, it's a Midwest company. They had the courage to take a family recipe from 60 years back and say, it's time for us to change. They threw out that recipe. They took two years to reinvent their new recipe. And they came out and said to America, hey, we changed everything from the crust, the, the cheese, the sauce. The line that they used was, oh, yes, we did. Russell Weiner, who I interviewed for the book, he's now the CEO of the company, he talked about how, oh, yes, we did was actually a line they used not as a marketing campaign, but every business decision they made, they ran through that filter. If it was an, oh, yes, we did moment, they moved ahead with it. And if it wasn't, they didn't spend money on it. So, yes, mm. oh, yes, we did. Now you've got self-autonomous autonomous cars driving down in Houston delivering pizza. And just a very creative company. And if they can do it as pizza, again, we can do it as, as, as differentiated small businesses. Great examples, both of those. So Ryan, you know, obviously it takes guts and courage to get out there and start your own thing, right? So let's say you have that, you're, you're pushing through, but then, you know, like any other business, you might face some setbacks here and there. How do you then, you know, reset that courage and, and keep going and climbing and build that confidence back up? Well, first of all, huge props to you like if you've gotten this far like you are so far ahead of, of most people and and you want to keep chopping wood no doubt and we always say that we're in the fear fighting business all right what is the fear the, the largest fear that you could take on and address and of course most people especially those that are not entrepreneurs what they seem to do is they suppress the fear versus address the fear so what is that big fear, that first fear that you want to fight? I, I love being in the fear fighting business, Cheyenne. It's like a privilege to go in and work with these leaders and first help them identify what is the biggest fear that we need to address. Now, here's the interesting thing. Sometimes everyone in the organization already knows what that fear is and no one wants to have that hard conversation. So often we are permission slip for a hard conversation that needs to happen where we're losing a lot of time because we're not addressing that conversation. So what are you afraid of? Like, let's just start there. That's number one. Two, go back to yourself. And I always say clarity is a rarity, right? How clear is the leader? It's almost impossible to be, to be courageous if you're cloudy. So we help leaders get clear on like, hey, why am I in this business? What, what does the future look like? Mm -hmm. Do we actually have a purpose that's big enough? Go back to method, the people against dirty. Doesn't say anything about soap, by the way. It says the people against dirty. Where else can they fight dirty as a business and be more clean? It gives them the opportunity to create new revenue streams under that idea, and they can be playful and creative off of that. So again, stepping back, get clear on like what business are you really in and making sure you have a mantra that the whole team can rally around. What advice do you want to leave our entrepreneurs and small business owners who are watching today? Number one, it's it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to have doubt. Uh, it's okay to have anxiety. It's one day at a time, one step at a time. I think the, the idea of being courageous, the difference between being courageous and thinking about being courageous is that a lot of people think about making change and very few actually take action on that change. So it's not enough to just embody change or embrace change. Have the courage to sit down with your leaders to create the change. It's okay if you don't have all the answers, let's bring them together. It can get a little messy. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable with your teams. I think we're mirrors, so when you're vulnerable, they'll be vulnerable back with you. And then go after it. Don't just talk about it, but actually do it. Love it, love it. Ryan Berman, entrepreneur, keynote speaker, and author. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, great insight. And thank all of you for watching The Small Business Show. 
exclusively right here on ASBN.com and now streaming on Roku, Fire Stick, and Apple TV. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Cheyenne Malone, exclusively on ASBN.com.